yes, that's right. I'll, I'll be bringing the mashed potatoes. Miss Pingrino's gonna bring the ham, and I think we should have everything we need for the party. Yes. Well, I don't know. I mean, I can look into it. I don't know if there's going to be any strippers available for Christmas Day, but, I mean, maybe we could... I gotta go. Um, <clears throat> welcome to an all-new episode of Just the Dumbest, the Christmas episode of Just the Dumbest, to be exact. If you're not familiar with this show, what we do is we talk about some of the dumbest things in the world. What have we talked about? We've talked about laws. We've talked about criminals. Uh, we've talked about beauty trends that could kill you if you're not careful. You name it, we've talked about it, and we continue to talk about crazy things on this show that we call Just the Dumbest. Since it is Christmas time, you know, we tend to do things that we always do every year. We call those Christmas traditions. Now, everybody's Christmas traditions usually are very normal, you know. You put up the decorations, you have the Christmas dinner, you open presents, you do the whole nine yards. But there are some traditions, especially ones from back in the old days, that are just a little, well, dare I say, dumb. And that's why on this episode, we're going to be talking about some of just the dumbest Christmas traditions. Ho, 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 ho! Now, before I get into this, I just want to say that I am in no way insulting anybody's Christmas traditions, whether they be religious, non-religious, uh, what we all know, you know, eating dinner, opening presents. I'm in no way making any kind of comment about those. Those are special and fantastic and a lot of fun to different people. It may not be the same for everybody, but those count and those are fantastic. I'm talking about Christmas traditions that were so odd that everybody stopped doing them and we'll start with this one. Putting fruitcake under your pillow. I'm sorry, what? What is the point of this? I mean, granted, fruitcake is not great. Nobody enjoys fruitcake. It sucks. It just sucks. It really does. What was the point of putting it under your pillow? Was the fruitcake fairy going to come and leave you a quarter? I'm not real sure. But according to Best Life Online, if you ate a piece of fruitcake, especially if it was from a wedding, and put the remainder under your pillow at night, legend said you dreamed the person you will marry. And this was popular in the 17th century, so you understand why we don't much do it anymore. Not only that, but they'd also toss shoes into a tree, and if they hung there, the thrower would be married within the year. So, something for all of us to look forward to. Throw some shoes on a tree and we'll see what happens. Or put fruitcake under your pillow. No, thanks. Well, there you go. That's one dumb tradition. Listen, don't put food under your pillow. That's just... That's not sanitary. That's... <laughs> Here's another one. Celebrating the Feast of the Donkey. What? Now, when I, when I think of Christmas animals, I usually think sheep... Or, or reindeer. Uh, I very rarely ever think of a donkey. Uh, but a, apparently in the 12th century France, a donkey would be led in a procession through the center of town to the local church where a service was in session. The donkey would remain next to the church's altar for the duration, and the congregants would mimic its bray in a call and response with the priest. Does that mean they would imitate a donkey? Mm-hmm. So they would, they would go, <laughs> Yeah. I kind of get the donkey thing because, you know, Mary and Joseph rode in on a donkey to have the baby. But what does that, why does that mean you have to celebrate a donkey at Christmas time? Why, do, why, does, why is it a Christmas tradition for me to go outside and go, <laughs> Well, that I don't know. I think we just made the thumbnail right there. <laughs> this one I don't get at all. Uh... Electing, I, 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 I'm not even sure how to get into this. I'm just going to say it. Just putting it out there. Another cr Christmas tradition that is no longer a tradition, thank God. Electing a child to run the church. So this was derived from some Roman celebrations from back in the day. They would elect what they called a boy bishop. To, <laughs> you see, Ms. <laughs> you said you left. They would run the church in lieu of a minister during the Feast of St. Nicholas on December 6th. So it ain't even on Christmas. It's on December 6th. In the most extreme examples, you'd wind up with some three-year-old running around leading the whole thing. Well, that's, that actually sounds kind of adorable, though, when you yeah. think about it. I, I'm kind of okay with that. That sounds like some, some fun celebrating right there. 
Uh, and really, the more I think about it, it doesn't really shock me that they would elect a child to run the church. Hell, we elect children to run the country. <laughs> I don't really know why you would do this either. This just seems like a bad idea, but apparently it was a thing. Appointing a Lord of Misrule. Let me say that again. Appointing a Lord of Misrule. Under the tradition of the Lord of Misrule, which was popular in medieval times, a jester or clown would become... <laughs> I didn't read this one. This one makes me happy. A jester or clown would become mayor of the city for the Christmas season. Oh, God, that means an entire month. The court jester would run the town, suggesting all sorts of funny things that everyone would have to do. Hey, clowns. Well, it's not a clown. It's just a... Jester. But they, 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 didn't, they didn't get dressed up in the clown makeup, right? Do you know that? I'm looking at one right here. There's one There's one right behind me right now. Look! Look at it. Look at it. Does that have a clown makeup on? It's questionable. It's, it's... Anyway, this is another tradition that uh, no longer goes about. Because, well, really, again, just like the, the letting the kids thing, we elect clowns to run the country, too. So why not let them run the city? <laughs> now, this one makes some sense. But at the same time, it's like, wrong holiday. Wearing costumes was a Christmas tradition. You know, in the last episode of Just the Dumbest, we talked about some of just the dumbest costumes. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have any costumes that represent Christmas celebrations of past, but apparently this was a tradition that was back in the 13th century. Apparently, a group of nobles burned to death when the tar on their forced savages costumes caught on fire king charles meanwhile narrowly escaped the incident and the practice was henceforth banned within his court so that's why they stopped doing it <laughs> that people almost died well ha wait a minute there's not a whole lot on that it just that's just what happened that's how wearing costumes at christmas stopped and apparently we followed suit here in america because that was in england mm. well it doesn't make a lot of sense at all does it but but we still wear. It's kind of coming back. People wear costumes. People wear costumes. Like I say, you know, people wear Santa suits and stuff like Reindeers, that. Elves, Reindeer, elves, snowmen. snowmen. I mean, we wear ugly Christmas sweaters and stuff like that. So I mean, it's kind of making a comeback. But apparently, it was forbidden after King Charles almost died in a fire, as well and as some. And nobles burned to death. And nobles burned to death. It doesn't even say how they caught on fire. They but did. Did it? there was tar on their costume. Oh, tar on their costume right there. I missed it. Apparently, a group of nobles burned to death when the tar on their forced savages costumes caught on fire. <laughs> oh my god, I'm one of just the dumbest. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> okay, so this is just wrong. But I wouldn't put it past people to do this in this day and age as well. It's a tradition that no longer exists, but I mean, I could be, I could be uh, making some people want to do it. I could be, they could bring it back, as they say on the one show. <laughs> caroling extortion. So caroling used to look a lot more like trick or treating back in the day. So in the 19th, 19th century Europe, this is just like 100, 200 years ago. It was uh, an occasion for poor folks to request gifts from wealthy landowners, and they go from house to house and say, okay, we're going to sing you a song, and you can either invite us in for a drink or some food, but if you don't, you never know what's going to happen to your yard. So, like, when people get egged, their, their yards egged during Halloween, somebody could just straight up take a poop in somebody's yard on Christmas time. Now, the more I read that, though, I, I do like that, that the, the poor Mark people... Mark bells, sweet silver bells, pay me or I'm going to TP your house. That was just uncalled for. But I, I do enjoy that, that it was poor folk going to the wealthy saying, hey, we're going to sing for you. You either give us something or... I mean, I literally could just drop trail and, and just drop a, a, a chocolate mud baby in your yard. Like, his seriously. Name's Deuce. Oh, Duke is his middle name. <laughs> I, again, this seems more like a Halloween tradition, but I can see how it kind of, kind of worked for, for Christmas, at least back in the day. And you can still do it now. It's telling ghost stories. Apparently in the song, It's the Most Wonderful Time of the Year, you hear the line, There'll be scary ghost stories and tales of glory. I, I, I've never known that. 
Is that? Scary ghost stories and tales of old glory. I, I've never noticed that. I guess I've not paid attention enough to that song. But it became a real big tradition in the Victorian era shortly after Charles Dickens wrote A Christmas Carol. Uh, which is, of course, about Ebenezer Scrooge, and he gets visited by three ghosts. So that makes sense. But as time went on, people realized, hey, telling scary stories isn't the warm and fuzzy feeling you want around Christmas time. So they just stuck to Twas the Night Before Christmas, which I think is a good way to go. But hey, if you want to bring it back, I'd be all right with that. Let's tell some scary stories at Christmas time. I don't care. And finally, this one, again, might be a kind of fun to bring back, depending on how you feel about it. It's an, a little odd, but, I mean, it's, I don't know where it came from, but it seems like it'd be kind of fun. Thinking of Santa as a gnome. Now, I don't know why everybody used to think of Santa as a gnome, but apparently it was a thing way uh, well into the 20th century. I guess it makes kind of sense. I mean, he was short, pudgy, he's got the beard, he's got the hat. And who else is short and pudgy and has beards and wear hats? The elves. So I guess they kind of just assumed that, you know, that he would just be the same size as the elves. But in 1938, Coca-Cola decided to depict him as a six-foot fully grown human grandfather. And because of their huge budget, because everybody loves a good Coke now and then, it's, it spread like wildfire and everybody started to look at Santa as the giant, jolly old fat man himself. And so that's where modern day Santa comes from. I actually didn't know that. So that's what it is. Up until about 1938, everybody looked at him as an, as, as an elf or a gnome. Well, that kind of makes sense because if he was the same size as the elves, then what would make him the special elf to be considered Santa? Why was he a gnome? I don't know. Christmas used to be very complicated, clearly. And there you have it, some of just the dumbest Christmas traditions. Why don't we just stick to the regular ones, you know? Decorating, enjoying the holidays, watching the movies, eating the dinner, opening the presents, and I think, I think that'll do just fine. But anyway, that's going to do it for us on this episode. Make sure you follow me on social media at Smoking Hot Toddy on Twitter. Make sure you follow Super Fuzz on Twitter at Super Fuzz Videos. And speaking of the Super Fuzz page, oh, like, click, and subscribe. Make sure you go subscribe to the Super Fuzz Productions page on YouTube. Keep up with all the shows going on. While you're there, you can go to the About section and find some fantastic merch. It is Christmas time after all. You're going to need that perfect gift for somebody so why not hook them up with some super fuzz merch and while you're over there in the about section check out all new episodes of the smoking hot Toddcast next week as a matter of fact it's the christmasiest christmas special ever live 2021 you're not gonna want to miss that from all of us here at just the dumbest have a merry christmas and a happy new year and we'll see you in 2022 for just the dumbest i'm hot toddy good night <laughs>